Today we're going to be checking out a watch from a micro brand based out of Stockholm. And this brand, I think, really has a great eye for creating vintage inspired chronographs. They use the Seiko Mecha Quartz movement a lot, and so they're able to keep prices very reasonable. The one we're going to be taking a look at today is their take on a classic military chronograph. And that is the Corbeau from Nezumi Watches. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, I live in Japan, and I love to collect affordable watches. Now I've been doing this channel for going on four years now, and for one of the segments I do every now and then here on the channel, I ask you guys to suggest watches in a certain category, and then we kind of go over and try and pick the best watches in that category. I did one on chronographs a couple years ago, and I got so many interesting responses that I couldn't make just one video about it. I had to do a second video that included kind of the lesser known picks that I hadn't heard of, and Nizumi featured on that list. Link to that video up here if you're interested in seeing it. And ever since then, I've been interested in getting one of their watches in to check out, because when I looked at their lineup, I was really drawn to their designs. They just have a great eye for creating these vintage style watches, and their prices, again, are very reasonable. So when they reached out and offered to send over their newest one, the Corbeau, which is kind of their take on a military one, I jumped on it to get a chance to get one of these in hand. And overall, I've been pretty impressed at what they put together. Now this watch was given to me for free by Nazumi, which is why you saw the paid promotions flag at the beginning of this video. However, other than the watch itself, I did not receive any compensation from Nazumi, nor did they have any input into the content of this review. And let's start by taking a look at those specs and price. With a 40 millimeter diameter case and 46 millimeters lug to lug, the Corbeau is a modest sized chronograph that's going to wear well on a wide range of wrist sizes. It features a very convenient 20 millimeter lug opening with drilled lugs, so that's going to make it very easy to change it to a wide range of straps if you so please. Included with the watch is a basic but pretty well made NATO style nylon strap. The watch is 12.7 millimeters tall and that does feature a boxed, slightly domed sapphire crystal that does sit a little bit above the bezel. The watch features 50 meters of water resistance, which is good enough for daily wear and outdoor use. It'll protect you if the watch is submerged for a short amount of time, but you're probably going to want to avoid swimming in it or having it in the water for a prolonged period of time. One really cool feature of this watch is that it features the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz Chronograph movement. This is a quartz battery powered movement, so it's super accurate. However, the chronograph part of it does have a mechanical module on it, which gives you a little bit of the feel of a mechanical chronograph with the convenience and affordability of a quartz movement. The Corbeau can be purchased direct from Nezumi for $303. If you're interested in getting a cool watch themed t-shirt like this one, you can head over to my website at justthewatch.com. I've got a ton of really cool designs. Check it out and support the channel. I feel like there tend to be two kinds of micro brands. On the one hand, you have the spec monster brands that really their main draw is that they provide a great value for the money. And on the other hand, you have micro brands that have a really great focus on design. Now, obviously it's best when you find brands that can do both well, but that seems to be a little bit rare. And while the specs and build quality are pretty good from Nazumi, I think their strength really lies more on the design front. This watch really looks amazing in person and really evokes that kind of military, rugged, outdoors look that they're going for here. Aside from the design, the overall build quality and finishing is good, but not particularly outstanding. We'll circle back to that in a minute, but let's talk about the design for a bit first. The Corbeau is Nezumi's take on a military chronograph, and they really nailed the look of that. With the black dial and black bezel, you get kind of a stealthy look that sort of contrasted white chronograph subdials for these chronograph features, which give it a reverse panda look. Everything on the dial is printed, but the printing is very crisp and everything is very legible. At 3 o'clock, you have a 24-hour subdial, which will give you the readout of the hour in military time. At 6 o'clock, you have a running second subdial, which is tied to the time. And at 9 o'clock, you have a 60-minute counter for the chronograph. The white central seconds hand is used for tracking chronograph seconds. The subdials are generally easy to read with very nicely cut out hands. However, I'm not a big fan of the markings on the 60 minute counter for the chronograph at nine o'clock. That counter is kind of crowded with 60 individual indexes for each minute, which make it kind of hard to read. 
Obviously, if you're going to have 60 minutes on that small of a counter, you need to break that up into kind of groups to make it easier to read. But they've done that in kind of a weird way. You've got large markers at every 10 minutes and a crosshair that breaks it up into 15 minute segments. But there's not a consistent breakup into five minute groups, which I think is what you would really want here. The result is that sometimes you've got 10 minutes before you hit a large marker and sometimes you've got five minutes in between. And that can be very confusing to read the minutes counter at a glance. The bezel gives you a second method of timing things, which features a 120 click unidirectional elapsed time bezel. So this is a bezel that's very similar to what you would get on a dive watch. For me personally, I would have rather have seen a 12 hour bezel here. Chronographs already have a method of tracking minutes, which is the chronograph feature. So if you have a 12 hour bezel, that would allow you to track a second time zone or to track hours if you wanted to track something longer. But perhaps it could be useful to be able to time two different things at the same time, one on the bezel and one on the chronograph. The bezel action is just okay. It is very functional with minimal back play. However, it's not a very smoothly operating bezel, it has a little bit of a grating feel to it. Would have been nice to see a little bit better action on that. One of my favorite things about the design is the case. It's an all brushed case, but it has a very nice design with these kind of swooping twisted lugs. Really cool combination of kind of some rugged finishing and a rugged shape to the case with some kind of elegant cuts to the lugs. The boxed domed sapphire crystal is also very beautiful and very functional. You're never gonna have to worry about scratching this thing. Another great feature of this watch. The watch features a fully loomed bezel, loomed hands, and loomed markers. However, the loom is not very consistent across those three elements. The hands and the bezel glow pretty brightly. However, the markers fade very quickly. This is pretty common for printed Arabic markers. There's just not a lot of surface area to apply a lot of loom to, but your after dark legibility is not going to be great on this watch. You get a pretty strong initial glow for just a few minutes, but after that, everything starts to fade pretty quickly. And I think you'd have a pretty hard time reading this after maybe 20 minutes in the dark. The strap on this watch is a pretty basic nylon NATO style strap. The hardware is stitched securely in place and everything does seem to be sealed well. It doesn't look like you're going to have to worry about any fraying or anything like that anytime soon. And I really like the color of the material. It has kind of a nice sheen to it. And the watch really does look good on this strap. However, for $300, I think I would have expected a nicer strap or maybe a second strap option. These nylon straps tend to be among the lowest cost options available. And this one does seem to be more on the budget end of the spectrum. An even bigger problem is that it's a little bit on the short side. These straps are based off of military straps that originally were meant to be very long, allowing them to be worn over clothes or wetsuits or that sort of thing. And so they typically have kind of a lot of extra on the end that results in kind of a tail that you tuck back into the keepers. And that plays a large part in this type of straps signature look. On my seven and a quarter, seven and a half inch wrist, there's no extra material. It kind of barely reaches that second keeper. And you don't really get the full effect visually that this kind of strap typically has. Powering this watch is the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz Movement, which I think is kind of the watch enthusiast's choice for a budget chronograph. Seiko's Mecha Quartz movements are very cool movements, but they do have kind of their pros and cons. Keep in mind that this is a battery powered movement. It does not require any winding or any movement of your wrist. The powering of the watch is completely dependent on a battery, just like a standard quartz movement. This also means that the timekeeping and the accuracy is going to be on par with quartz movements, so it will be very good much better than an automatic or mechanical watch. The mecha part of this mecha quartz movement refers to the fact that there is a mechanical chronograph module that sits on top of the quartz movement. Once again, this module is going to be powered by the battery of the watch and moved by the quartz motor. However, unlike a normal quartz chronograph, the chronograph function of this watch is run through a series of gears and springs like a mechanical chronograph. One benefit to this is that the chronograph second hand will tick five times per second, so it gives you a nice smooth sweep that resembles an automatic or a mechanical chronograph second hand. Another is the overall feel. When you activate the pushers, both for starting, stopping, and resetting the chronograph second hand, you get a very satisfying tactile feel, and the second hand resets instantly rather than that kind of slow sweep that you get with a lot of quartz chronograph movements. So if you prefer the feel of an automatic watch, 
this mecha quartz movement is going to allow you to have some of that for a much lower cost than you would get with a, an automatic chronograph movement or a mechanical chronograph movement. The main downside to these mecha quartz movements is their maintenance. If the chronograph secondhand becomes misaligned, if it's like banged or if it's not lined up properly at the factory, you can't adjust that without taking the watch apart and you probably need to take it to a watchmaker really to have it done right. Normal quartz chronographs can often be adjusted by pulling the crown out and activating the pushers, but that doesn't work on these mecha quartz chronographs. Thankfully, the alignment on mine is perfect, so hopefully that's not something you'll have to worry about. One final note about the VK63 mecha quartz movement used in this watch is that the movement is a movement that features a date complication. However, the dial on this watch does not have a date cutout, which renders the date non-functioning. And for a lot of people, that's going to be totally fine. Chronographs are crowded as it is, and it's often difficult to find a good place to implement a date window. But since the movement does accommodate a date, you are going to have a date position on the crown. So be aware of that. It does have a ghost date position. Okay, so let's try and wrap all this up and talk a little bit about my overall thoughts on the watch and its value. This watch, like many of the others on Nozomi's site, really has a great design. And I love that they're not just churning out fashion watches here. They've really done their homework to go back and create these very tastefully done vintage watches that are highly functional, that are well built, that are just good watches. And I feel like from a design standpoint, this watch will go toe to toe with any other watch in this $300 price range. Paired up with that is a decent build quality and a good level of finishing. It's not gonna be best in its class and probably you can find better build quality and finishing from uh, major brands like Citizen or Seiko. However, you typically won't be able to get that sapphire crystal from the major brands at this price range, which for me is one of the most important things. So the fact that they are able to provide that really helps this watch make its case at its price range. But when you look at it compared to other micro brands, again, in this $300 price range, you can find better spec watches for the same price. So the value proposition of this watch is largely gonna depend on how much you're drawn to the design, which again, is the area that I think Nizumi really excels in. If this watch were priced at around $250 instead of $300, I think it would be an absolute home run. But at $300, I think that's something you kind of got to consider and weigh your options a bit with. But that's my take on it. Let me know what you guys think. Again, a lot of you are already fans of Nizumi because you're the ones who pointed me in this direction in the first place. But let me know what your thoughts on the brand are, your experiences with them, and on this watch in particular. Anyways, that will wrap it up for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.